All right, so since you can use any counting number as a base, it stands to reason that you can use a base that is larger than the number 10. But what happens, what symbols, what numerals do you use when you have a base larger than 10? Because in order to have a true place value system, you need a symbol, you need a base, and a symbol to represent all the counting numbers that are less than the base. So if your system has a base greater than 10, what do you do once you get, once you get to 9? Because you're going to need a unique single symbol to represent all the numbers after 9 up to your base. Well, in this book, what we're going to do is we're going to use the alphabet. So we're going to start off the number 10. We're going to represent with A, the letter A. The number 11, we're going to represent with the number B. 12 is going to be C. 13 is going to be D, 14 is going to be E, 15 is going to be F, 16 is going to be G, and so forth. So you can continue on in this fashion. Um, so if you have a base 16 system, you'll be using the numbers 0 to 9 and the letters A through F to represent your uh, numbers. Those will be the numerals to represent all of your numbers. A base 16 system is actually called a hexadecimal system. A base 2 system is called a binary system. Both of those are systems that your computer would uh, use. So we have hexadecimal and binary systems. Binary systems only use zeros and ones. Hexadecimal system use all the numbers from 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, and F. Okay, so let's actually do some conversions in systems that have bases greater than 10. So first example, so the first example is convert the given numeral to a numeral in base 10. Okay, and the number, the numeral that I want to look at is D2OE base 16. D2OE base 16. And I usually have my little cheat sheet here. So the number 10 is A, the number 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E, and 15 is F. Okay, so this is a base 16 or hexadecimal number. I want to convert it to the corresponding base 10 number. Well, it's just like what we were doing before. Um, the E. E is actually the number 14. 14 is in the ones place, which is actually 16 to the zero power. 16 to the zero power. So this first place is the ones place. Plus, zero is in the next place. Zero times 16 to the first. Two is in the next place. That's two times 16 to the second power. And the last place, there's a D there. Well, D is the number 13. So this is 13 times 16 to the third power. 13 times 16. This sum will actually be the number that we need converted to base 10. So let's see here. We have 16 cubed is 4096 times 13. 16 squared is 256, this is 0, and this is plus 14 times 1. So let's see what we get here. We have 13 times 4096 plus 2 times 256 plus 0 plus 14 times 1. And I get here that this is actually the numeral 53,774 if you write it as a base 10 numeral. So base 16, it looks like this. Makes no sense to you or me, probably. But base 10 is this number, 53,774. So let's go back in the other direction. And let us convert a 
base 10 number to base a uh, base that's not 10. Let's try uh, this one here. Let's convert to the indicated base. So let's look at this 9004. 9004 is in base 10. They want me to convert it to base 12. So this is not base 16 anymore, it's base 12. So I only need numbers up to uh, 11. So I need 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 is A and 11 is B. Okay, so now let's convert this to a numeral in base 12. Well, in order to do that, we need all the powers of 12. We need the power of 12. We need the largest power of 12 that's less than 9,004. So 12 to the 0 is 1. 12 to the first power is equal to the 12. 12 to the second power is 144. 12 to the third power. Let's see, 12 to the third power is 1,728. 1,728, which is still smaller than 9,000. So then I try 12 to the fourth power, and that's 20,736. So 12 to the fourth power is 20,736. Well, that number is bigger than this one. So we only need one, two, three, four digits to represent this number. We don't need this fifth place value because that value represents groups that are larger than 9,000. So the first thing we want to do, the first thing we want to do is, well, first we know there's a one, two, three, four digit number. We need to know how many groups of 17, uh, 1728 there are in 9,000. So uh, 9,004 that is. 1728 and there are five groups there there are five groups of 1728 in 9000 and let's see those five groups represent 8640 and when we subtract that from 9004 we get 364 so it turns out that if I take 9004 and I divide it by uh, 1,728, the answer is 5, and when I do the multiplication here, I get 8,640, and this subtraction gives me a remainder of 364. So that's the remainder, that's the quotient. So now I'm going to move down to the next place value. The next place value, we have a... Uh, the 144th place. Within the 144th place, I need to know how many groups of 144 there are in 364. So let's see here. We take 364 and we divide it by 144. And let's see. That gives us 2. And 2 times 144 is 288. And then we subtract. 364 minus 288 is 76. So we know in the second place value we have a 2, the quotient. And then we just need to know how many groups of 12 there are in 76. So we're moving right along. So I take 76 and I divide it by 12. How many groups of 12 are there in 76, is it? And uh, that is going to give us 6. 6 times 12 is 72 and we subtract and we get 4. So the number that goes in this place value is a 6. And lastly the ones place. Well we need to know how many groups of 1 there are in 4. Well there are 4 groups of 1 in 4. You get 4 and you subtract you get a remainder of 0. So the number that goes in this place is 4. So the number 9004 base 10 is actually 5,264 base 12. So the answer to this, 5,264 base 12.
That's the final answer. All right, so now we've seen an example of converting a um, base higher than 10 to base 10, and we've also seen converting base 10 to a base higher than 10.